Hello eLearning Heroes, this is Owen Holt here again with another Storyline tutorial. A question came up recently in the forums about dynamically changing the player colors. And while you can change the player colors within Storyline, that's set for your entire uh, project, uh, unless you cheat a little bit. And I'm going to show you what I figured out on a way that you can cheat. So here's my published file just to show you what I mean. Um, if I click on the orange button, it changes my player to orange, including uh, the menu, resources. It changes the whole style even of the buttons. If I click green, I now have green. If I hit blue, I have blue. If I hit the silver, it takes it back to the default. And I can you know, toggle between those, and it's, it's changing them to whatever theme I want. So in theory, you could change your player as you reach different points within the training to indicate that you're on a new chapter or you know, kind of create a theme that follows through the, the course. You could even turn it red if they're taking a quiz, indicating that time is almost up, whatever, whatever it may be, just as a visual cue. So <clears throat> I'm not sure why the person was asking. There may be reasons why you would want to do this. I'm going to show you how. So to start with, um, the first thing that I did was to explore the, the code here. So I opened up my development window um, and let me open those two up side by side here so you can see here's my project open, here's the developer tool window. Um, I undocked it just so that it's free floating. And if I select element and I look at the, the player canvas itself, I can locate where that is in the code. Now this didn't really tell me anything directly here. I can see some styles going on over here, but I know that this is nested inside of something else, is nested inside of something else. And as I, as I scroll up and hover over that, it's selecting the same area. And what's interesting is when I click on this area, I can see the style that's associated with it from within the style sheets. Um, and in fact, the style sheet that this is specifically coming from is, is the output dot min CSS. And I can see that if I hover over it. And to make sure, validate that this is indeed the, the piece that I want to modify on my style sheet, if I deselect background, you can see the background disappears over here in my, uh, in my published file. Or if I delete border color, the border just moves to default black instead of the lighter color. Um, and I could change some of these things on the fly. If I wanted to change the color of the text to red, uh, I could test that here in this window, and you can see the effect immediately taking place over here. Um, <clears throat> so this tells me what's affecting the change, but it, obviously any changes that I make in the development tool window aren't permanent. And I wanted a quick and dirty way to change this. I do know that I can use JavaScript to change which external CSS sheet a page points to. So I thought, what if I created duplicate CSS pages where I'm only changing the code that controls the player? And there's a quick and easy way to do this. So the quick and easy way is actually from within Storyline. Uh, so within Storyline, when I publish, and we'll go ahead and publish, it's going to create that cascading style sheet that I was just telling you about. So if I drill down here in HTML5, it looks like I may have published twice. If I drill down in HTML5, data, CSS, there's that output. So it's creating the style sheet for me as I go. Um, if I wanted to change some colors. The easiest way to change colors is actually in the player. So if I look at the player and I have colors and effects, and I'm just going to do the very the, the, the quickest and, and easiest way to change these, which is actually to choose a different default. So I'm going to choose forest green. And you can see that gives me different buttons. It gives me the style for the drop-down menu, the hover effect. All of that's built in. So I click OK, and I publish. And when I publish, if I open up that folder and I drill down 
I'm actually going to right click in here and I'm going to rename this. Now, if I did nothing else and I just left this uh, with a new name, it would break my project. Um, but I'm going to rename this to green. I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to paste it into some other folder. And that's so that when I publish again, it doesn't get overwritten. So I'm going to close that. I'm going to close that. I'm going to come back into player. I'm going to go to colors. I'm going to choose, uh, let's choose medium blue. I'm going to choose medium blue for my file this time, and I'm going to hit publish again. Now, every time that I do this, essentially I'm creating that same default sheet. But if I rename it to reflect what the current color status is, so it open up off-site or off recording window here. If I drill back in here, I'm going to see the default again. I'm going to name it blue. I'm going to copy it and paste it in my other window. And now I have blue and green. So I'm creating some different style sheets all based on the default style sheet. And once I do that a number of times, um, what I'm going to end up with is something like this. I have my folder. I have blue. I have green. I have orange. I have some different styles in here. And so when I publish the last time, I'm going to publish. Okay, actually, let's not publish yet. I'm going to go to the player. Colors and effects again. Let's go back to the default. So I have my gray, and on the default, I'm going to publish. I'm going to open the folder again. And this time, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm still going to drill down to where that CSS is. And then I'm going to open up my other folder, and I highlight the, the files that I created. I'm going to copy and paste them here so that all four of my CSS files are all together in the published output. Okay. Now that those are there, I want to show you the JavaScript that I'm actually using in the file itself because it's really pretty straightforward. One of, the, one of the frustrating things that Storyline does when you execute or, or when you publish is it, let me refresh this so you can see my latest published version. There it is. Everything is working. Okay. So that's the, the most recent publish that we just did. We dropped the additional files in, and now Storyline can find them, and I'll show you how Storyline can find them. Um, what I first want you to notice, um, pay attention when I refresh the window, I, and I'm going to try and do this. Well, uh, okay. This may be a little hard to, to see because, uh, well, let's drag this over so that you can see both of these side by side. Okay. What I want you to pay attention to is what happens with this CSS. So when it first comes up, this link is going to come up, and then you'll see a little purple flash here. So watch it again when I hit refresh. You'll notice that the first time this ID target CSS isn't there for just a brief moment, and then it appears. So watch closely right in this area. Did you see that pop in and highlighted purple? So what's happening in my Storyline file itself, I have the very first piece of JavaScript that I execute right at the beginning of the timeline for this slide. It basically is um, some jQuery to find an element that's a link, 
but it has to be the element that specifically has the path to my CSS sheet in it. Because there are several different links in there. There are several different cascading style sheets being used by the page. I want to affect only this specific link, and I'm going to add to it an ID. One of the things that Storyline, that Articulate doesn't do when you publish is create IDs for a lot of the elements in the player. And so you have to manually be able to find them some way and add an ID to them if you want to be able to do a lot of manipulation with them. And in this case, we're going to manipulate it multiple times. It's easier for me to now point to just that ID, target CSS. So the very first thing that happens when that file opens up is it assigns an ID to the link that has the, the link to our CSS in it. Then the JavaScript on each of these buttons is also pretty simple and pretty straightforward. When you click a button, it's going to find the element that has that ID that we just assigned, and it's going to change the attribute the href attribute, meaning the file that it's pointing to, to one of the other files that we just added to that folder. So all you're doing is overriding the style sheet by assigning a different style sheet to the, to the overall um, player. And you're using everything else that, that Storyline is, is publishing. They're, they're publishing each of these style sheets for you. You're just going to choose and change and modify and manipulate the, the style to the one that you want. You're going to publish, you're going to give it a name, save it off in another folder, create a different one, publish it, rename it, save it off in another folder. And once you have the different styles that you want to toggle between, um, creating that toggle is really simple. First, identify and give the um, link a name, and then you can call it by name and give it a different HTML target each time. So that's, it's, it's pretty simple. It's not a lot of coding, um, and you can let Storyline do a lot of the heavy lifting for you. Now, if you don't want to use any of those presets, of course, you can go into the player. You can go into colors and effects. You can show the advanced color editing, and you can create some custom player. Whatever you want to do, the, the, the sky's the limit here. Um, you can, everything within the dropdown you can, you can change um, and create a, a different effect. So you can customize the player to something that you want, publish, save it with a name, or save it, retitle it with a name, save it somewhere else, and then after you publish, drag those back into the published output and your, your JavaScript will work. <clears throat> the caution here is, any time that you make changes to your file and then publish, it's going to overwrite the contents of that folder and all those other files will be lost. So if we were to come in here and publish and forget to drag those other files that we saved back in, what happens now when I click these is it can't find the file and it's just going to go blank. It'll find this file because that was the original one we published with, but these other files, it's just, it's blank, it doesn't know what to do. So it throws up a default, it changes this to black, it just gives me a, a dark outline, and it's gone. So make sure that you drag the other folders in after publishing, and each time you publish, you'd have to put those folders back in there again. Um, but once, once they're in there, um, everything works. So. I hope this has been helpful. I think it's an interesting effect. Uh, if you find some uses for it, fantastic. If you have any questions, feel free, feel free to reach out to me. And happy coding.